I've been an awkward person all my life until I found this. There are three main obstacles that we need to overcome to cure our social awkwardness. Obstacle number one, communication problems. In order to solve this part, we have to learn from the greatest orator of all time, Demosthenes. He was a weak kid with a speech disorder born in a society that valued physical strength and great oratory performance. So he spent his whole teenage years being ignored and made fun of. But after he became an adult, he relentlessly trained his communication skills. One of the most efficient exercises was trying to speak clearly with pebbles in his mouth. This majorly improved his speech articulation and gained him respect all over Athens. And that's exactly what you should do. But instead of pebbles, use something like grapes. Besides this exercise, Demosthenes also used to recite verses while running uphill, speak over the roaring sea waves, and practiced his speeches in front of a mirror. But out of these three, the last one is the most important. A study published in 2022 revealed that looking into a mirror activates certain parts of your brain, including your mirror neurons. This makes you more aware of yourself and ultimately helps you understand others better. But even if your speech articulation is good, you can be seen as awkward if you suffer from paralinguistic incongruity. What is this? Just take a look. I recently laughed so hard that I threw up. Basically, your tone, pitch, or volume does not match the context of your message. This mismatch creates confusion or discomfort to the listener. To combat this, take a neutral phrase like sorry and say with different emotions. Sorry. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 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 I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Obstacle number two, social skills deficit. Here's the thing, some people are awkward because they use the wrong social skills. What does this mean? In the book Captivate, Vanessa Van Edwards, a behavioral researcher said that there are 14 different social skills. Typically, everyone has two skills they excel at and two they struggle with. In the comments, I left the questions that will help you identify your top tier and bottom tier social skills. The ones you score 3 out of 3 on are your strongest, while those with 1 or 0 out of 3 are your weakest. Now here's the trick. During each social interaction, you must double down on your strongest social skills. For example, if storyteller and comedian are your best skills, you can easily become the life of the party, because that's your natural inclination. However, if your best ones are listener and nurturer, you'll feel awkward putting yourself in the spotlight. You act better and more naturally in more private conversations. As for your bottom two skills, these are basically your weak points. You should also focus on building them over time. Now, each skill has its own improvement techniques, but there are some universal tricks that will help. A eye contact. The social signal processing research found out that the sweet spot of holding eye contact is between 50 to 70 percent of the time. More than that feels aggressive, less feels insecure. However, if you are in a group, you can change your glance from person to person every three to four seconds. B. Facial expressions. Most people underuse facial muscles, yet a 2016 study published in the Sage Open proved that expressive faces are perceived as more attractive. How can you improve them? Well, let's take a look at the king of facial expressions, Jim Carrey. Outside of his natural talent, before playing a cartoon character like the Grinch, he would often try to mimic its expression. Of course you don't want to become like him. He literally spent hours and hours doing it, but if you practice it from time to time, these exercises will improve your facial muscles and make you more expressive. C. Gesticulation. Sometimes we don't know what to do with our hands. Well, you can use specific actions like holding something in your hand or casually adjusting your clothes. But regardless if you are awkward, charming, or just a normal dude minding his own business, you will always have awkward moments. It's impossible to completely avoid them, but you can fix them. Take a look at this guy. Um, I would be surprised if they do. <laughs> the, um, pardon me. My apologies. <laughs>
What you felt is called vicarious embarrassment. It's a feeling of discomfort that we experience when witnessing someone else's awkward moments. But here's the good news. There's a thing called the imperfection paradox. Basically, these awkward moments can actually turn you into a more likable person. How? First, acknowledge the awkwardness. If you somehow try to pretend that the awkward moment never existed, you will make the situation even weirder. Second, speak out your inner dialogue. If he said something like, I'd like to vanish into thin air right now, the situation would have felt a lot less awkward and maybe even funny. Plus, being honest will help you connect more with others. Now, even if you fix your communication and social skills, there's one more thing that can hold you back. Obstacle number three, obsessive interests. For this part, let's take a look at the life story of Theodore Roosevelt, one of the most charismatic presidents of all time. Young Roosevelt suffered from severe asthma, so instead of playing outside, he spent most of his time indoors, reading about nature, birds, and history. During one family gathering, he started to name every bird he saw out the window, interrupting everyone at the table. Over time, he figured out that his obsession was making him look weird, so he began to practice restraint. Instead of boring everyone in his life, he started to use letters and journals to vent out. At some point, he even wrote a bunch of books about birds. And that's exactly what you have to do. If you have a big obsession in your life, write about it, open a TikTok account, an Instagram page, or even a YouTube channel. This will help you redirect your passion and connect with others. But you will still have to face a huge biological challenge, a very active default mode network. This brain part develops when you're not focusing on the present moment and it's linked to introspection, overthinking, and obsessive self-reflection. Basically, you become obsessed with how others see you, and that kills most of your social interactions. The solution? Active listening, the practice that is entirely focused on others and not on you. Fortunately, I know the perfect video for this.